actually brought the entire coffee pot with me today. Because really, can you talk about Shakespeare without coffee? No. No, you can't. In Shakespeare's England, sword fights were very common. The sword itself was something that the average person would be carrying. And it, so it was part of the basic dress, both because a gentleman could expect to be challenged to a duel at any moment. They might need to protect themselves against a vagrant attack, or they might just want to be stylish and prepared because the sword was actually a part of the expected dress, particularly for a gentleman. And that includes William Shakespeare. This element of history is important when you're looking at the plays of Shakespeare or studying what would have happened in the Elizabethan era, because just like today, if we're sitting in a theater and a character walks out on stage and they're barefoot and they don't have on shoes, we respond to that occurrence as something odd, something's off, something's different. We pay attention to that because our mental expectations as a society is that your average person, when they're not having something going on or they're not hanging out at their house, that they would have shoes on their feet. And so the lack of shoes would say something to us as an audience. For William Shakespeare, there are similar social conventions that happen on stage. And one of them is the presence of a sword and the techniques behind fighting. There were expectations from the Elizabethan audience as to what needed to happen on stage. And understanding those expectations help us understand what William Shakespeare included and what he left out and why. Now, when it comes to props and costumes, William Shakespeare's audience was very familiar with swords and swords on stage. So when Shakespeare was portraying his fight scenes, he had to get it right. So how did he get it right? Find out this week as we ask, did Shakespeare hire sword masters? A swordmaster is someone who is fluent in the style and technique of sword fighting. This could be a foil, a rapier, a broadsword, or several different kinds of weapons, but a swordmaster was someone whose job it was to train other people how to use the swords. There were many, many different fencing masters who were operating in London at the time that Shakespeare was writing his plays, and they were often trained by some Italian fencing masters known as Agrippa, Tybalt, Bonetti, Capofero, among others. Now you may recognize these names from one very famous scene in the movie The Princess Bride between Inigo and the Man in Black. You are using Bonetti's defense against me, huh? I thought it fitting, considering the rocky terrain. Naturally, you must expect me to attack with Capofero. Naturally, but I find it Tybalt cancels out Capofero. Don't you? Unless the enemy has a study, he's a good guy. The fencing masters that Inigo and the Man in Black are talking about were actual fencing masters that were influencing William Shakespeare and influencing the plays that he put on stage, and specifically influencing Shakespeare's stage performance of fight scenes, because these Italian masters were among the first people to actually diagram and list out rules for what it meant to produce a good fight. They literally turned a fight into an art form because now there was a frame, a guide, a specific correct way to do this, and they wrote it down, and then they trained that method to other people. Now, most of Shakespeare's audience would have had a detailed knowledge of swords, sword fighting, and fencing, and they would be very critical if the, st if the staged fight was not correct. An example of this criticism is when Ben Jonson actually criticizes William Shakespeare's portrayal of the War of the Roses, pointing out that Shakespeare was using rusty swords and saying that his fight scenes weren't very good. And William Shakespeare would go on to include specific lines in the play Henry V as a kind of closeted apology to Ben Jonson, a tongue-in-cheek joke between theater masters about the staged fight scenes. So this is an example of how Shakespeare was aware of how important it was to his audience that the fight scenes be correct and that they follow the expected conventions. So when Shakespeare wanted to get this correct for his actors, his actors had to be trained in fencing and he would bring in fencing masters to do this kind of training. Now there were a lot of, there were a lot of Italian fencing masters who would come over from Italy and other places in Europe and they set up shop as entrepreneurs themselves in England selling their knowledge of fight scenes. They would sell the fact that they knew how to fence properly and they would train English gentlemen and they would train 
theater actors, including Shakespeare's actors. One of Shakespeare's company members, Will Kemp, was actually knowledgeable in sword fighting. In an episode of That Shakespeare Life, it's episode 21, where we interviewed Joseph David Martinez, the former founding member of the Society of American Fight Directors, he shared with us that one of the reasons William Shakespeare worked with Will Kemp was because he could bring a knowledge of sword fighting to Shakespeare's theater. One of the books that specifically influenced William Shakespeare was by a man named George Silver, who in 1599 wrote a book called Paradise paradoxes of defense. And this was a book all about martial arts skills and sword fighting skills. And in it, he proposed that the mark of a real gentleman was the ability to fight well with a sword. And so when Shakespeare wanted to portray gentlemen on stage, he had to train that actor in the right way to sword fight, or he wouldn't be able to sell it to his audience because they wouldn't believe that he was a real gentleman if he didn't know how to sword fight. And with all of Shakespeare's subtleties and questioning that plays such a role in his plays, if there was something on stage like that, where the actor playing a gentleman maybe wasn't good at sword fighting, the audience would read into that and say, oh, maybe he's trying to say that this guy isn't really a strong gentleman. And so Shakespeare had to be conscious of this. In his book, Shakespeare and the Making of Theater, Stuart Hampton reads, recounts a tale by George Silver, where he challenges a group of Italian fencing masters to a fight with his English fencing masters, basically to prove that the English were superior to these Italian masters, but that they had mastered the masters in a sense. And he outlines this fight in the context of, I wanted to challenge them to play and play with the specific word that he uses. And Stuart Hampton Reed draws attention to that phrase because what George Silver didn't say was he did not challenge them to a quote, fight. It was all about the theatricality. It was all about the presentation and doing it right like a dance or a painting. It was pure theater for George Silver. Now, in the end of this story, the two groups didn't actually end up fighting because the Italian masters refused um, George Silver's challenge. But it does demonstrate the very, very close relationship between accurate martial arts and fencing and the portrayal of stage fights in theater by William Shakespeare. The level of sophistication that this required and training of his actors only underlined Shakespeare's commitment to his art and the fact that he was very responsible and very forward thinking and at the cutting edge. Working with Shakespeare's theater in London, you were working with the best. They would train their actors and their fight scenes were realistic and these were all details that set Shakespeare's company apart from the competition. So the answer to this week's question is yes, William Shakespeare did hire sword masters to work in the theater and some of them were hired on in the company permanently or regularly like Will Kemp was an actual company member and others of them would be brought in on a consultant basis where they would be hired to do a job for a certain amount of time and then that master would go on to work with another theater company or to work with someone else who wanted to be trained. Either way, they were definitely active in the theater under William Shakespeare. And as we mentioned, Italian fencing masters were coming over to England almost in droves to set up shop to train people, anyone they wanted to learn in their knowledge of fencing. So William Shakespeare took full advantage of this available opportunity to train his actors and to make his theater the best success it could be. That's it for this week here at Did Shakespeare. I'm Cassidy Cash, that Shakespeare girl, and I hope you learn something new about the Bard. If you enjoy stage combat training and you enjoy the techniques that go into portraying Hamlet and Henry V and the War of the Roses and all of the famous fight scenes that we love to see from William Shakespeare, if you'd like to know exactly how William Shakespeare did that and what Elizabethan stage fights were like, then you should come with us on our trip in September of 2019. We are going to spend five days in Stratford-upon-Avon and London, and one of the private tours we're going to be taking at the Globe Theatre includes a behind-the-scenes look at stage combat fighting that will William Shakespeare would have done. We will get a private tour at the Globe. This is not available to the public. It is being put together specifically for our tour group, and it will take a look at the props, the costumes, and the special effects that would have been used by William Shakespeare. Early bird tickets for this trip go on sale at the end of September. That's the end of this month right now, and if you would like to learn more about that or to grab the tickets, you do have to be on our email list. We've partnered with British History Tours to offer this trip, and part of our agreement
agreement for the discounted tickets is that we can only offer those to people who have signed up to receive them. Anyone can sign up at the regular price, but to get the early bird tickets, you do have to be on the email list. So if you would like more information about how to get that, please check the show notes of today's episode where I've included a link. Click the link, sign up for the trip, make sure you check Shakespeare to get on the right list, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.